Better information, better decisions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Michigan Replay. Can you believe it? Ohio State and Michigan, 34-31. Michigan wins it. I think if you go back over the years, this one might fit into the classic range, don't you think? Uh, Jim, the uh, thing that's happened in these... Um Ohio State-Michigan games is we've all forgotten how to play defense. And that used to be the <laughs> real hallmark of these games. That's right. They used to be low-scoring, yeah. hard-hitting, defensive I mean, any time you got inside the 20, man, it was right. like kick a field goal. That's You're right. never going to get inside the That's 20. Right. There was over 940 yards total offense. Well, it's been that way for the last few years, and it's scary. I'd like to get back to the old <laughs> defensive rock'em sock'em. And in the first half, it was all Michigan. It, this was uh, dominance in the first half on your part. Well, I think we pretty much dominated the game the first half. Um, here's Tony Bowles. This is our second drive. We drove down the first time we had the ball and missed a field goal, Jim. And this is our second drive after we stopped Ohio State. And for the most part, on the ground. Did, yes. Were you expecting yes. to get that yardage? Yes, we, we expected to run on them. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't expect it to be uh, quite this uh, explosive uh, offense. But, um, you know, we, we blocked well. We ran well. We, we did things well the first half. We did not turn the ball over the first half. And, uh, and that's important. And, and Leroy Hoard had a tremendous day again. Leroy Hoard uh, is, a, is a great power back, and he and Tony Bowles complement one another. Uh, here we settled for a field goal again, and Mike Gillette kicks it through. That's the first score of the game, three to nothing. Defensively, you were working pretty good against their offense. Actually, we played pretty good defense the first half. They broke a couple of plays, but we, we uh, hit them in the backfield a couple of times and played pretty good defense. Um, we didn't tackle real well in the first half. Although they, we shut them out, we did not tackle well. And I was worried about that at the start of the second half. Again, though, on the ground, the way you're controlling the ball, this has got to make you feel like, hey, we can make it happen. And then you went to the big play and hit him deep. We, uh, we went to the big play, and Greg McFurtry was wide open. And, you know, uh, Demetrius Brown is a, is a great long passer. If you want to throw the ball long and accurate, uh, he can do it about as well as anyone. And he hit the big play there, and so that gave us a 10 to nothing lead. Here's Snow, they're fine back, fumbles. We got great field position here. We take the ball and score once, and we had an illegal formation, which we only had six men on the line of scrimmage. Called the play back. We went back to the same play, and this time, Leroy Horde runs it in, standing up, and uh, we score again. 17 nothing at that point. And again, you talk about Demetrius Brown throwing long. With that kind of an arm, you almost got to use him a couple times. Well, long, you got to go. You got to go deep. This is one of the few times we got to Fry and uh, sacked him here to stop that drive. And then just before the half, uh, we get an opportunity here to uh, try to get down, get at least in the field goal range, uh, hit Johnny Colasar across midfield. And uh, with time running out, uh, we're moving down into into position. And the key here is the wind is at your back. Right. And you right. know that with Gillette, yeah. you might have an opportunity. Right. So we shoveled uh, to uh, Leroy for a good gain, and then we had to kick a 50, I don't know what, 56 yarder. 56 yarder, that is a Michigan record, Mike Gillette, and it could have gone from 65, probably. Well, it, it was one of those deals where you pretty much controlled the first half. It was 20 to nothing. The defense had played pretty well, although I didn't like the tackling. <laughs> the offense did not turn the ball over, did but you? You, I cautioned them at halftime that this game is far from over. I was going to say, do you think that the lead maybe lulled the kids a little bit? Might have. I don't know. There's more to it than that, Jim, because they, uh, they put on a great second-half offensive show. The biggest second half uh, I can recall in any game since I've been at Michigan. Well, coming up, the wild second half and a whole lot of heroes from this Michigan and Ohio State game. That's next when Michigan Replay continues. You know, I dedicate this game to all the guys who you never see play, but they contribute as much as every other guy on the team. You know, guys like Michael Dames, Dave Chester, you know, all those guys, you know, guys that play on d they're all seniors. And, you know, they contribute, you know, if anything, they just motivate other guys on the team. And, you know, through practice, sometimes I have hard days and, you know, all those things that happen to me, you know, these guys are just there to help me and, you know, boost me up. And so I just decided that no matter what, you know, I give 100% for these guys.
The great football battles between Michigan and Ohio State can now be enjoyed on home video. It's the 10-year war. Relive these games with coaching legends Bo Schembechler and Woody Hayes. That Ohio State defense was something special. Their offense couldn't move across the street. We were trying to psych one another. Sure, he's not above that, nor am I. <laughs> you get highlights of the games between 1969 and 78 with comments from Bo and Woody for just $32.95. Call 1-800-356-2820 for your copy of the 10-year war. Some guys look at this, they see just another great job. But when you're Mr. Goodrich, you learn real quick that behind this car, there's a somebody. Somebody who depends on these wheels. Keeping this car running right's important to them. That's why they brought it back here, to this GM dealership. Just another brake job, not to the guy who drives this car. And not to me either. Mr. Goodrich knows. It's not just a car, it's a freedom. In the pizza delivery game, the Noid can zap ordinary pizzas. But Domino's Pizza delivers more than all the others combined. So when you call Domino's Pizza, you get the best delivered pizza. The Noid just can't beat the best. Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. to be an automotive expert to recognize a great ride. It's the result of a tuned suspension called DynaRide, only from Buick. DynaRide balances a comfortable ride with precise handling, smoothness with control, good reasons why. Opening the second half, Michigan had a 20 to the lead, and for the most part, this thing was over in my mind, but uh, you could have never expected what would happen in the second half. I, from I, I expected them to come back and to uh, put some pressure on us and to come after yeah, us, but, you, but not like you that. You couldn't have expected your no. defense to almost disappear. That's right. I mean, it's unbelievable how they moved the ball. Uh, this is a counter play with snow and a big hole. Our tackling's not good. And, um, that was a big play to start the um, second half, Jim. And, um, and they, they moved right down the field and score on us quickly. And it wasn't any different that they did, was it, from the first half? Not really. I don't think much different at all. But they, um, they certainly blocked us well. They ran well. We didn't tackle well. And it was big because of that. The, the crowd, crowd, the got, crowd back got back in the, back game. In the game. That's right. It was pretty quiet up until that time. And then all of a sudden, they got back in the game. And now it's a ball game. 20. We drove down and missed the field goal, Jim. And uh, so this is their next possession, and they're moving again. Third quarter, 20 to 7, and they're moving again and again. The crowd is all over the place. And when they complete a pass, I mean, oh, the yeah. stadium's up for grabs. Sure, sure. Because, you know, they can sense that the uh, momentum has turned, and it had. There's no question about it. And I've never seen fullbacks go through your inside <laughs> like that, and no, uh, especially in goal line situations. Well, uh, it's one of those things where uh, they're a good blocking team, and their offense had really improved over the latter part of the season, and they really got things going. And you really couldn't pressure Fry very much. They did a good job protecting him. They protect him well. They, they move him out on uh, bootlegs and things like that. And, but the, the big plays were by Snow. The, really, the passing did not bother me at all. Uh, the thing that uh, bothers me is when they run on you. Jim, when they run on you, 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 you've got a chance to get beat. You just cannot let people run on you. And they were running on us better than any team has in a long time. That includes Miami, Notre Dame, the whole All game. That's right. And here he hits pass uh, over the middle uh, to Olive for a touchdown. They kick the extra point, go ahead 21 to 20. Now, are you sitting back saying, whoa, what's going on now? Well, what we had to do is to get back in the game, and we uh, first thing we do on the very first play uh, after the kickoff is to fumble the ball. Now, that's two fumbles we had in the second half that stopped drives of ours. I felt we could keep moving on them as long as we didn't turn the ball over. And this is a game, a big this game thing. This third and goal here, they give the ball to Snow, and we stop him. Now, that's a key play because we stopped them on second down. They had it uh, down on the two. Uh, forced them to go to the field goal. It was the one time after the turnover that we stopped them in the second half. And that kept you in the game being a score away from taking the that's lead, right. which was big. 24-21 now. 
And um, we go right back on the first play. We hit a pass over the middle uh, to McMurtry. Uh, comes back again, hits the screen over here to Tony Bowles. And uh, this is a big play that takes us down into scoring position. And that was on a big third down. It was a big third down play. It was, a, it was an excellent play. It was the first time we had thrown that screen this year and uh, worked very well. And then over a big hole, uh, Leroy Hoard goes in standing up. He kicked the extra point, go ahead 27 to 24. But Jim, this game is not over. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably are amazed that, with right. what's happening because the defense in the past has responded when you've taken the lead. That's right, that's right. And uh, it was disappointing, but uh, you know, give Ohio State credit. They did a great job and they've got some great athletes and they've played a great second half against us. And I mean, this will give you an example of what emotion can do in a football game because they came out in that they, second half and they were flying. Yeah, absolutely. Here's that fullback again, right up the middle. Uh, goes in, uh, they kick the extra point, so they go ahead 31 to 27. Big play after that on the kickoff and one of the best decisions you made all day. They changed the kickoff return and uh, they were kicking from uh, right hash. We decided to go to the wide side of the field, which is not customary. It's hard to get over there. But Colasar does a great job and we get, a, get some great blocks and we go all the way to their 40 yard line Jim, that was a big return, believe me. Just a minute and a half left, and now there's less, uh, now there's just a little bit more than a minute left, right. and you go to the air. We go to the air, and uh, Johnny Colasar with one of his patented uh, great catches uh, for a touchdown, and uh, we kicked the extra point, but this game is not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a broken record. So they come back again, and uh, he's hurried here and rushed and throws the ball. And uh, I think that's the reason that he threw it badly, because he had some pressure from the backside. Mark Spencer intercepts for us. And now, Jim, <laughs> the game the is over. over. Uh, again, did you expect that kind of game uh, going into that third quarter? I felt going into this game that we would need 24 points to win it. I had no idea that they would be able to get 31 points on our defense. I had less of an idea that they would get it in 30 minutes in the second <laughs> half. Down the stretch offensively, did you change it all? I mean, obviously the conditions of the game being down like they were, throwing the football, because I thought you might stick it on the ground because you'd been using well, it up pretty well. The reason that uh, we went to the pass a little bit more in those drives is the linebackers were starting to play real snug. And uh, they had to in order to stop our running. But I felt we could move on them and score every time we had the ball, providing we didn't turn it over. The times that we didn't score, we either missed a field goal or we turned the ball over. Now, on the sideline during that second half when the emotions were going to Ohio State, uh, did you do some talking to try to get those kids up? Well, I was uh, a little bit upset to say the <laughs> least. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Out there, uh, especially to uh, from a team. Now, now the one thing, uh, this young Fry at quarterback did a great job for Ohio State. Carlos Snow is as good a back as we're going to play again. And those fullbacks they got are underrated, and that big offensive line is underrated. And, uh, and consequently, we knew they would be a good offensive team. Not that good. <laughs> well, it came out a 34-31 Michigan win, and that's all that counts, the final score. Don't go away. We'll be back with a look at the defensive captain and a few more emotional comments from a very happy locker room in Columbus. Well, I had some resolve to uh, take care of the right drop, the potential touchdown pass uh, to Demetrius. And, uh, that point, kickoff in the opening of the second half, bounced off my tie board. Uh, we had to get some field position on that second kick, on the last kick. And uh, I had to take it, even though I, was, I don't know how deep I was in the end zone, but I had to take it out. And I know I was had some extra adrenaline in that play, so I thought I'd move all the way. And I, I had uh, Chris on my right side, I just had to run into the kicker, but uh, we got good field position. And on the catch, you know, I just got to go through those things. I mean, it's, it's, it's either that you do it or you don't. It's like I said last year, you know, I dropped one last year. I could have won the game. This year I did, so I'm glad. I'm, you know, I'm proud to be part of the Michigan team. And right now, you know, there's a lot of emotions coming forth right now, and I'm sad, you know, it's my last game. You know, I just know what to say right now. The defense stopped him, and they did. It came with that big play with Mark Spencer in the interception. That's the greatest thing. the greatest sight I've ever saw in my life. Seeing him dive for that ball and just hold him. Because I think they had good field position. Mark and Alex, uh, they put a lot of pressure on Fry. They, uh, they creamed him up front on that last play. And uh, I just happened to be standing there. The ball came my way. I just concentrated on cradling it.
To stay competitive, your company must increase productivity at least 10% a year. Without the right computer system, you'll never have a chance. Call Unisys. Better information, better decisions. The 1989 Buick Regal. It brings a new kind of style to the American road. It's a Regal new feeling, a style that's appealing. The look of a Buick today. It's the pride and the smile, a Regal new style. It's the road that Regal commands. Oh, the great American road belongs to Buick. Save up to $1,000 on Regal with $400 cash back and option packages. A one-on-one -on -one discussion with one of Payne Weber's top executives. What about CDs in today's market? Are they a good idea? We're talking with Joe Grano, president of retail sales and marketing at Payne Weber. Joe. We believe that in today's market, CDs are a very appropriate investment, and so much so that we're offering an exciting rebate program. Tell me how this rebate works. Well, if a client purchases a three-month CD through Payne Weber, we not only will provide the competitive yield, we also are going to take the profits that we make as a firm and give it back to the customer. Well, if Payne Weber's not making a profit on these, why are you doing it? We're doing it because, one, it's in the customer's best interest. Secondly, we are encouraging our customers to sit down with us and understand that even savings are an investment, and all CDs are not created equal. And are these CDs insured? All CDs are insured, yes. How can the investor get more details? By simply calling a Payne Weber investment executive. Thank you, Joe. And goodbye for now from Payne Weber. 89% of CEOs surveyed believe their companies are too short-term oriented. You need a computer company that really knows your business to plan for the long term. Call Unisys. Better information, better decisions. Down through the years, Michigan has been blessed with some outstanding defensive linemen. For the past four years, one of the best ever in maize and blue has been patrolling enemy backfields. His name is Mark Messner, and despite his great success, his career got off to a rocky start. I didn't even think I'd really play at Michigan, let alone start as early as I did. I thought maybe I could contribute by my junior year. I've always had a guess, tendency to underestimate my abilities, and uh, when everything happened so quickly, I was just sort of overwhelmed, and I never even considered the fact that I might hold some records. Messner was moved from linebacker to tackle after his freshman year, and former Wolverine John Jumbo Elliott made life miserable on Messner that first spring. With his confidence shaken and unsure of his new position, Messner went into his first start against Notre Dame a nervous wreck. I was so nervous that I kind of got sick on the offensive lineman's hand when he was down in the stance. <laughs> and he couldn't move, and I was so... And he didn't get off in the stance and everything, and I just went flying through there and made a tackle. <laughs> from that point on, it's all history, I guess. History indeed. Messner is Michigan's all-time leader in tackles for loss. And for his four years as a starter, he's been daring the offense to come his way. I never really took it upon myself as being a leader like that. I just went about my business and going about playing every day without making mistakes and trying to make those big plays. And Because that's the way Hammerstein was. Hammerstein wasn't a, a vocal leader. He was just going out and doing his job day by day. And uh, I felt that if you lead by example, that that would alleviate a lot of the, the so-called pressure put on you by everyone else when you don't worry about whatever anybody else is saying about you and, and asking the questions doing things like that and you just go out and perform, that it takes a lot of pressure off of you. I think a lot of it has to do with the way you see yourself. Uh, when I put on the gear, I don't see myself as smaller than anybody. I look at the, at the scouting report and it says he's 285 and I consider that even. And besides being the great player, Messner is the kind of young man the Michigan program is built upon. His explanation on how he'd like to be remembered after graduation says it all. I'd want him to say that he's, an, he's a, a quality guy. He's a guy that, that uh, worries about what people think about him, that, that he doesn't want to fit that stereotype of the, of the dumb jock, and that he, he presents himself well and he's a smart kid. 
Uh, I, I like to be known as, as an intelligent football player and a good football player. And I want that to be the image that people look back on me with. Mark Messner announced as a Kodak All-American today, and he's been something over four years, hasn't he? He sure has, and of course, uh, being a Kodak All-American means that you were selected as an All-American by the coaches of the United States. And one of the great leaders you've had. Again, you, you, you say that to be successful, you've got to have the great senior class, great leadership. Mark Messner's been one. Well, he's given that. Uh, he's uh, been a four-year starter, Jim, and he's made big plays, but uh, as he um, depicts himself, um, he's just the kind of guy that wants to win for Michigan, and I don't think all these accolades are going to change the way he thinks, but he's a great, great football player. Well, Mark Messner is a, one of a number of seniors who will be honored this year at the annual Michigan football bust. There are tickets still available for that bust. If any of you Michigan fans want to show up and honor those University of Michigan seniors and the 1988 Big Ten champions, you can. The bust, Monday night, November 28th, 1988, at the Weston Hotel, in the Renaissance Center in Detroit. For ticket information, call area code 313-258-MICH for ticket information to this year's Michigan football bust. Don't go away. Bo and I will be back with emotional comments from the locker room and a wrap-up of the 1988 season right after we pause for these words. It's all about safety out here. Testing the features we build in to keep drivers out of trouble. High-speed handling, maneuverability, anti-lock braking means a lot out on the road. After all, somebody's family is going to be driving this car, maybe even mine. GM cars have been rated best American-built cars by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety for 11 years in a row. More than 50% of all business PCs don't communicate. If your computers could talk, you'd get information that makes a competitive difference. Call Unisys. Better information, better decisions. Somewhere. Right now. There's a clean... Quick. Beachwood and Budweiser with your name on it. The General Grabber Off Road Performance Series. Goes all the way. To stay competitive, your company must increase productivity at least 10% a year. Without the right computer system, you'll never have a chance. Call Unisys. Better information, better decisions. this group well it's obvious that you do and especially in that locker room scene they really have come together after that tough start they're a very special group of young men and um, they've been fun to coach they've had a very minimum of problems and um, the results are that we're a decent team Jim we 
played well enough to win the Big Ten championship and go to the Rose Bowl, and let's see what happens next. And it's one of your kinds of teams I know that you like because there really aren't any superstar kind of guys. Well, it's just a bunch of kids out there doing their job. There right? isn't anybody there who thinks they're a superstar. <laughs> you make there, sure of that, right? There may be some superstars there, but they don't think they are, and they're, they're pretty much uh, a really closely knit group, and uh, they get along well with each other. And uh, the word team is very important in our program. Hey, we can make it happen. And then you went to the big play and hit him deep. We, uh, we went to the big play, and Greg McMurtry was wide open. And, you know, uh, Demetrius Brown is a, is a great long passer. If you want to throw the ball long and accurate, uh, he can do it about as well as anyone. And he hit the big play there, and so that gave us a 10 to nothing lead. Here's Snow, their fine back fumbles. We got great field position here. We take the ball and score once, and we had an illegal formation, which we only had six men on the line of scrimmage called the play back. We went back to the same play, and this time Leroy Horde runs it in standing up, and uh, we score again. 17 nothing at that point. And again, you talk about better information, better decision. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Michigan Replay. Can you believe it? Ohio State and Michigan, 34-31. Michigan wins it. I think if you go back over the years, this one might fit into the classic range, don't you think? Uh, Jim, the uh, thing that's happened in these um, Ohio State-Michigan games is we've all forgotten how to play defense. And that used <laughs> to be the real hallmark of these games. That's right. They used to be low-scoring, yeah. hard-hitting, defensive backs. I mean, any time you got inside the 20, man, it was right. like kick a field goal. That's You're right. never going to get inside the 20. That's right. There was over 940 yards total offense. Well, it's been that way for the last few years, and it's scary. I'd like to get back to the and, uh, and that's important. And, and Leroy Horde had a tremendous day again. Leroy Horde uh, is, a, is a great power back, and he and Tony Bowles complement one another. Uh, here we settled for a field goal again, and Mike Gillette kicks it through. That's the first score of the game, three to nothing. Defensively, you were working pretty good against their offense. Actually, we played pretty good defense in the first half. They broke a couple of plays, but we we uh, hit them in the backfield a couple of times and played pretty good defense. Um, we didn't tackle real well in the first half. Although they, we shut them out, we did not tackle well. And I was worried about that at the start of the second half. And again, though, on the ground, the way you're controlling the ball, this is... Got to make you feel like a little <laughs> defensive rock 'em sock 'em. And in the first half, it was all Michigan. It, this was uh, dominance in the first half on your part. Well, I think we pretty much dominated the game the first half. Um, here's Tony Bowles. This is our second drive. We drove down the first time we had the ball and missed a field goal, Jim. And this is our second drive after we stopped Ohio State. And for the most part, on the ground. Did, yes. Were you expecting yes. to get that yard? Yes, we, we expected to run on them. And, uh, you know, I... I didn't expect it to be uh, quite this uh, explosive uh, offense, but, um, you know, we, we blocked well, we ran well, we, we did things well the first half. We did not turn the ball over the first half. And Demetrius Brown throwing long. With that kind of an arm, you almost got to use him a couple times. Well, long, you got to go, you, you got to go deep. This is one of the few times we got to Fry and uh, sacked him here to stop that drive. And then just before the half, uh, we get an opportunity here to, uh, try to get down, get at least in the field goal range, uh, hit Johnny Colasar across midfield, and uh, with time running out, uh, we're moving down into, into position. And the key here is the wind is at your back, right. and you right. know that with Gillette, yeah. you might have an opportunity. Right. So we shoveled uh, to uh, Leroy for a good gain, and then we had to kick a 50, I don't know what, 56-yarder? 56 56-yarder, 56 that is a Michigan record, Mike Gillette, and it could 